for better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. Hold on tight, I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just hold on tight. We are two crazies from South Africa, that is Frick and Pietru, we decided to chuck everything and now we are living and sailing full-time on our new home, Sisu. We use our Iridium on board to stay in touch with family and friends whenever we go on a long passage. So what we'll do, we'll try and bring you in the picture using these emails together with the footage that we took during the Atlantic crossing hopefully giving you an idea of what transpired on Sisu those 22 days at sea. We, we just left the Canaries, the, the Grand Canaria anchor spot. We go to Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, we're going to Barbados. We are finally going to the Caribbean. We to white beaches, blue ocean, palm trees, palm trees and, sunshine. And, and, and cheap rum. And sunshine. I don't care for the wine, but and sunshine. And yeah. diving and all those oh, yeah. and swimming and, and just so yeah, it would be so great and always kind of like constant trade winds, not this crazy weather that we all the time have. Of course there will be squalls I think and yeah. things like that but that's a new it's topic. A new thing that we need to do. <laughs> <laughs> a new topic. I wanted to start sailing but it's yeah. just not happening because we're too close to the islands and uh, and the, this huge Atlantic swells is hitting the island and then bouncing and back yeah. and then it's just not it's not working nice for the sails. We, like, Our new sails are flapping. But, but you know, apparently this is how Indonesians found the other islands. Because I'm looking at the, at the wave patterns and the way the wave, if the wave patterns must go like this and it ricochets, it actually creates, land, there think. must be land and, it, and that's how they, they actually, that's how they steered in, in those old days. They used the bouncing of the ricochet of the waves, like, so the wave like sonar or like land. radar. They used radar yeah. long before we did. They use wow. the waves as radar and all the returning waves is like, oh, there must be something there. We will need to start the engines if we need electricity because we're still going to make some videos and I'm busy writing a killer app for you guys. Not for, just for the yattis, not for all the viewers. But yeah, so the two laptops is using a serious lot of power, especially if we're rendering videos and when I'm compiling software. So it's 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 a little bit CPU intensive. We are hoping that the moment we go a little bit past this island, this is that line is the line that we set for for about uh, more or less 200 miles west of um, Cabo, Cabo Verde and that is what we think the wind will take us so the wind will take us like this and then yet we'll start turning and then we will go all the way to there we finally got our code D up The wind turned way more than was predicted. First night watch is done for, for the day one on our way to the Caribbean. So it's been a, oh, a iffy night. The wind is just not what it's supposed to be. It's like between 8 to 12 knots and the sails we were doing wing on wing but look they keep on folding in on one another and the wave directions is that way which is the way we're supposed to be going but we're on the wind vane so we're going that way 
but look at my nice sunrise. There's a low pressure system coming in here, so we don't want to be too close to the low pressure system. So we want to come here and around here the wind will die and then the wind will pick up again and here we need to start going straight for Barbados. So we ended up having the folder code D and just sailing the, the Genoa with the main up. We've got our fishing lines out, so hopefully we'll catch something on that side as well. Our Spanish flag! We're going to be flagless for 21 days, or I hope so. So the main was just making a racket and shaking the, the rigging too much. So we got our code D out again, and we flipped the, the Genoa to the other side. So now we wing on wing. We have the Cody and the Genoa and it promised to be a good, good sunset. And this is our speed. So we're back. <laughs> back at dead downwind. And we are actually quite on target with this dead downwind for a change. <laughs> if you look, look here. Like last night we, we went like this and then the wind change and the wind change again and the wind change again and then abruptly changed to that and then this morning it changed to that and then it we started doing that so we wasted the main and then <laughs> that was the main part and then we, we changed back so this is night two i've got the first watch from eight to eleven and we are going dead downwind on 180 Wing on wing with our brand new black Genoa and our Cody. And we're doing a pretty cool. Oh, it was eight just now. Not so seven, seven average. Oh, the wind has picked up to 16. It looks averaging about 10 to 12. And we're gonna be ex experiencing Christmas in no wind at all which is awesome we're gonna drop sails and have ourselves a party we have a problem with our fishing We are going too fast and then it jumps out of the water and it hooks itself and then it starts spinning. It even does it in the middle of the line. Not sure we can save this. So I don't think these are good thing for fast sailing trolling. Sitting here having coffee, a morning coffee, and something just made me turn around and look. Literally right in front of us, right in the middle of the bows, is this huge wooden fishing boat. I just ran up the hill, took the autopilot off, hands steer, just like turn sharp, sharp, sharp to the right to try and avoid this damn thing. But we managed to go past it, and I'm, I'm sure. It, we could have caught it with one of our ears, it was so close, it was so scary. <laughs> Try to, to film it and uh, to be able to put it on video and it was not possible. And it looks more like one of those boats that people attempt to cross to the Cabo Verde or to the Canaries. We got on our radio mail uh, a message from our friends at just checking at Barbados. Um, they arrived yesterday, two days ago. Yeah, so that's a good thing because then people can yeah. scout for us what's happening on the other side. <laughs> yeah, and they told us that Barbados is not really ready for this whole COVID thing, so they put 
that put incoming yachts against the big harbor, industrial harbor wall, which is not built for, for boats like us. And it has huge swells coming in and out, which is also not built yeah, for they've been, yachts. They've been chafing lines, they've been popping fenders and everything, right there. So now we're looking at other islands. And the one that is Antigua. So, so, so we're Barbados. not going to Barbados, <laughs> we're going to Antigua. Yes. Yeah. Oh, do we have a flag? I don't think we have I a flag. I think we have. No, I think we have. So, change of plan, but that is sailing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, we need to find out where, where to, to check in. To check in, yeah. <laughs> what have we got here? <laughs> a big mai mai. It jumped, or not jump out, but it surfaces every now and then, but it is, it is struggling quite a lot. So we're going to change that one to the same same thing like this. The it's the an squid orange squid thingy. The squid thingy. So I guess I'm going to put my meat back in the freezer because we're eating fresh fish tonight. Yeah, there it is. There, 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 I can see it. Can see, see, see. Well, I was lying down because I've been on watch since 5 o'clock this morning and I just heard this shouting and screaming. And thank goodness I wasn't asleep yet. I thought it was like a golden Oh my word, it's big! It's a big golden one. Oh, look at it, look at it, look! It's massive! Oh, he's tired now. Just brought the knife. After a failed attempt this morning, I think I'm going to chum the water. Here goes nothing. This is our second night. Maybe the third night. I think it's the third night. It's like, you know, like day one, day two, day three, and then all the other days. So I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is our third night. Maybe, third night. Just getting so confusing because everything looks the same. All the routines are the same. And we actually honestly don't know anymore what day it is. And it's already not, it's not even the beginning of the passage. The only way I can stay awake now is to go to the snack basket. the third night of our trip and I'm on the sunrise shift which is going to be cool there behind me and I bet it's going to be spectacular like all other sunrises and sunsets it was pretty much really consistent the whole night um, we are approaching a system within the next two days it's not going to be nice and it's going to be Christmas and it's going to be horrible so we're going to try and go as far south as possible. On passage every single day um, besides the normal stuff you start experimenting and I love to experiment with food but not only food it's almost cocktail hour so what I've done is I have got some pink gin in here with a cinnamon stick you can see it there 
and a slice of lime. So I'm just going to let this sit for a while so that the gin infuses the cinnamon. And then I will add the tonic and the ice blocks later. One ice cube does the trick. Cheers everybody. We've got something at the end of our hook. Yeah, I was unzipping the main. We wanted to raise the main and then I saw, oh, okay. Oh, it's a small one. Just release it. Yeah. Dolphins, 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 dolphins. Ah, look at them! <laughs> The last day of the predictions that I downloaded today or this morning was you can just see it starting to make a cyclonic turn. So I hope not that is going to mess up our, our trip to the Caribbean. Technically speaking according to the insurance we are out of hurricane season. Like with Five days. <laughs> uh, 25 days. So hopefully nature is listening to insurance. I think it's going to be a quiet Christmas. That's in four days from now or three days from now and this is basically when our time clock stops. We, we just know we have 14 more days according to the GPS to sail to Antigua. And it's just now a countdown clock anymore. Oh, it's Wednesday. Oh, it's the 13th. It doesn't work that way anymore. From now on, at least. And it will just get more and more another day. So we will start working on videos. Pietro will start working on videos. And I'm busy making a killer app for you guys. We've got our fishing lines out. And so far I've proven to every day we had a bite. That was actually quite incredible. It didn't help us so far, but it's based on Noah. So I have a very, very secure pin there with a very strong cord. And then a bungee cord here in the middle. And the bungee cord is supported by another line. So if the bungee breaks, then it's still there and then I've got this hand reel and you can see it's been whacked by the sun quite quite a lot and the idea is and there goes the line with a squid lure at the end an orange one because it seems like they go for the orange squids so the idea here is if this line pulls taut it will actually then start swinging this thing over and it will whack on the deck and we will know we have a fish then a bungee will kick in so that the fish is not being ripped because we're going quite fast and it's then up to us to get the fish on deck We are 
are now getting a lot of scores from that low pressure system that we tried to dodge and I coming on like look at that there's a even a rainbow with that one so you can see them actually very clear there's another one over there so we need to go between that one and this one here right here if you look there so we were actually going we were going that direction and then we saw that guy is starting to overtake us so we decided to go at the back and what we do is we look at the radar and the the Ray Marine has this function of saying we can go into weather mode so we selected weather mode and it just makes the water show up a little bit more clearer so we can see there's a squall there's another one coming that one is already passed and the one that we just going to miss is this one here so this all of this right around us is basically all is the sea state that's not so cool um, and that's why we're going up and down as you can see it's like really bouncy out here but yeah so we we're just going at the back of that one so i'm now trying to maneuver so that we just slip past it all of them is actually moving in that direction yeah the wind has picked up so from 12 knots already to 16 I, I did see a 17 no, oh even 18 I need to start getting into the wind five degrees that way and I depower the main so the main is not going anywhere Ooh, we need to you see we our speed is dropping now quite a lot Mm. and we've got fishing lines out so we need to get our speed up quickly we just ripped our Genoa sheet again <laughs> so after all of these things and after blaming Lumar clutches and all of that it still happened so as you can see it all frimmed up so the sleeve just got got stripped by the clutch we're still busy with the reef line here so the clutch was it's only the clutch that was holding this one I need to fix it it's not good you can see there is the other part of the, the, the sleeve taking out your safety harness cool. well, I'm going to turn it into a safety harness Otherwise it's just a harness, like a life jacket harness, so they need these goodies. Okay, so Peter returned at 120 degrees downwind. Otherwise, because the water was coming over that bow at a huge speed. Now I need to find a, a place to clip this on that will not uh, let me fall overboard and dangling like a piece of shark bait over the over the side you've got the other one on the midship midship's key so it's gonna hold it so should we can we take this one out? And then you can just pull it through and then we can just put, bring the red one in. I think we I think you need to release this one, but I'm not sure how far you can release this one. The other camera ran out of SD card space. Sorry for that. So what we did was we used the other sheet line and we tied it down mid sub cleat so that we can cut this one. You can see it's cut. And tie this one on and feed it into the same place where this one was so now we just need to and that's a nice thing about the bowling you can untie it even after it, it took a lot of punishment the problem with a bowling is you cannot untie it under, under stress so if there's any tension like this one I cannot untie this one even if I want you cannot so you have to have no tension so now I need to undo this one and we're ready to go, but... 
Now I there's a squall dead air day, so we need to go south a bit. While I'm making more movies. Rick is getting highly annoyed. Because <laughs> he's got a crappy job. He is busy splicing. And my fingers from all the ropes and lines and stuff that and the salt are just taking a toll. So the satin is sticking everywhere. So I'm just like frilling it out and it's like making a big mess. And that noise I hear every five minutes. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But it <laughs> is frustrating. Well I take my hat off to you. I can't do that. It's getting to that point where it's getting <laughs> <laughs> it was got to be too thick that joy, no? otherwise it won't go through that. Yeah, so it has to go through this reel here, and it is 10 millimeters, so I cannot make it thicker. Okay, so this is how it looks. It feels strong enough. So now I just need to move this thing not to be on the same side, and then do the same. <laughs> you make it sound so easy. <laughs> and the sun is gonna set just now and Brick is still at it. <laughs> okay, so that this one didn't work because it's too thick. And Frick is still patiently <laughs> at it. I Amen. Take my hat off. I'm not sure patience. This is more like insanity. But I haven't heard any oohs and ahs and uh out of you today, so